Good afternoon, April 22nd, 2021. Putting in some alfalfa. Plowed up an old orchard grass field last year, last fall. And uh, gonna put in uh, some tetraploid Italian ryegrass in some spots. And other spots I'm gonna put in orchard grass mixed with a little bit of alfalfa. And then some spots is just gonna be all orchard pretty grass. Pretty small field here, um, just 10 acres. Got a tree line over there, shaded. So about 60, 70 feet off of that tree line's gonna be all just orchard grass. Um, out on the high dry spots, gonna be heavy alfalfa with a cover crop of this uh, Italian ryegrass kind of acts as an annual or biannual around here and I like the quality the forage quality of the ryegrass better it 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 stays green this this Italian ryegrass doesn't really head out at least not the first year and um, you know I like that so the quality is better because in my area southeast Michigan we always have problems with the orchard grass getting over mature before we can get it baled and then it you know we're talking about palatability issues people buy horse hay well actually anybody's buying hay i don't care if you got cows or horses you kind of like to see good optimal utilization you know as opposed to the animal going through the bale and high grading the bale and uh nobody high grades the bale better than horses with that uh upper opposable lip that they have here's a low spot here it's not wet except for over by the road it's only a little two acre spot but it's got a little microclimate it always takes a little bit longer to dry and so rye grass doesn't dry as good as orchard grass so this is going to be lighter on the alfalfa maybe about six to seven pounds per acre of alfalfa and then uh, probably about 10 pounds of orchard grass and then this up here is going to be no orchard grass because i think i'm going to have volunteer there's a hell of a seed bank in here and i know orchard grass is going to come back so um you know up here talking about 12 to 15 pounds per acre of alfalfa and probably about five pounds per acre of the rye grass i planted planting a um, leafhopper variety resistant alfalfa and I'm putting in the ryegrass with it because ryegrass produces a pretty good crop the year you plant orchard grass around here anyways takes a takes a good year to get going uh, so the ryegrass is going to be pretty important cover crop and uh, in case this alfalfa doesn't kick into gear this year uh, last year I had a lot of leaf hopper problems on the seedling alfalfa and it really knocked it back I've had some years where I get two cuttings a year off a new seeding but last year I didn't get anything off my new alfalfa so I really don't want to run into that again we'll see if these leaf hopper varieties kick into gear and help out basically I had this field really smooth and firm and uh, I didn't want to get it where it's too fluffy and then when it gets too fluffy you're leaving tracks when you go in and plant even that little John Deere you know has left some tracks and I called to pack to this first and the front tires of the big massey 2705 sunk down a little problem was i had a lot of rocks on the surface a lot millions of rocks you know thousands of rocks this size too many so i buried them by putting the cultivator that old field ford field cultivator at a moderate depth and it actually acted to bury a lot of the rocks then it was really easy to see which rocks are sticking up that I knew the call to packer wasn't going to push down. So I'm going to do one more. I'm going to run the call to packer again. I did the alfalfa just, you know, it's a small area. So I 
you know, it's a little bit tougher to fine tune your broadcast cedar in a small area. So I did the alfalfa first. Then the next pass, I'm gonna have alfalfa mixed with my grass seed, but I'm gonna go ahead and pack it again before I broadcast my second pass. Um, part, partly though, I didn't have my, you know, if I was doing a big piece of acreage, I'd, I'd calibrate it with the grass and the alfalfa at one time. Uh, feels good to be in the uh, cab with the heat. We've been, uh, we had snow flurries. Uh, had them on and off all day but um, yeah what this is doing so this is your time to get the field level uh, so I'll pack the field a few times anyways it allows me to see my tracks when I come over and broadcast grass seed second pass and uh, I'm gonna say if, if you got your if you kind of I didn't bring my scale with me my kitchen scale if I did that I would have weighed stuff out a little bit better put out a uh, theoretical theoretical amount of weight of uh, seed and then cover an acre and then see how much seed I got left. Well, this cult of packer is definitely doing a great job. Each pass is just, uh, this is my second pass on this field. I called pack it once before I uh, broadcast, now I'm packing it again. Um, then I'm going to pack it after I get done throwing the grass seed down. It's, it's really good, doing its job. Yeah, here's that rye grass seed seems a little denser than the orchard grass and it seems to throw a little bit further. So the orchard grass, or this is the alfalfa, it does have this seed coat. Um, seed coating says. Improved uh, seeding distribution, soil contact, water intake, fungal attacks, enhances nutrient uptake. So we'll see how the seed uh, coating does. I have used alfalfa with seed coating before. Um, you know, I don't know. According to Michigan State, it's up in the air whether or not seed coating is any more beneficial or not. It reduces the number of seeds per pound, you know, pure live seed. There's so many factors. It, it's hard to say what works and doesn't because it's not always easy getting alfalfa to take. And Hell, I got guys around here, I mean, they can't tell you if a spring seeding or a fall seeding works better, you know? Um, and studies of Michigan State can't tell you that either. So there's a lot of variables. But let's see how this pattern is. Second pass. So there's an alfalfa. There's a, that'd be the rye, rye grass. Yep, and it's firm. You know, they say should have it so that your boot doesn't sink in more than a quarter inch. And definitely that. There's some soft spots. Again, I wished I didn't. I wish this was, you know, not as unlevel as it is. Uh, fields typically have a tendency to level over time. I'm making sure to go the direction I'll be mowing, you know, so I don't have ruts going crossways. I've got a lot of extra ryegrass seed, so that, that's going to be my cover crop because I'm, I'm determined to at least get a crop this year in case this alfalfa doesn't work. So, you know, it doesn't come up good. Uh, so this is a leafhopper resistant variety. And basically leafhopper resistant varieties have little hairs or, you know, on them that are supposed to help prevent uh, you know along the stem there's these little spikes or microscopic hairs that are supposed to impede the leaf hoppers from stinging that stem and we get leaf hoppers they come north on currents from down south air currents way up high in the atmosphere and they come in about oh, sometime mid-june or so late june all right 
almost got about a few more acres to go broadcasting then uh, final pass of the call to back.